In this video, we will discuss the laminar flow and viscous flow through a circular pipe. We have a viscous fluid and for laminar fluid and through the pipe, the Reynolds number should be less than equals to 2300. The Reynolds number is given by rho into V multiplied by D divided by mu or V multiplied by D divided by nu less than equals to 2300. So equations are valid only for Reynolds number less than 2300. Consider here a pipe of diameter equal to D and through this the fluid is flowing with a viscosity equals to mu. The pipe is laid horizontal therefore Z1 equals to Z2. Consider two sections and let the pressure at this section is equal to P and the pressure at this section is P plus DP and let the length of this pipe is equal to DX. Let V represents the velocity. The velocity at inlet will be same as velocity at outlet because the discharge is constant that is for steady flow. Q is equal to area into velocity. Since area is constant, the velocity is also constant. So for this arrangement, we can apply Newton's second law. That is the net force is equal to rate of change of momentum, which is equal to m dot into final velocity is this value minus initial velocity is equal to this value. So net force will be equals to P multiplied by A. This will is positive of X and this one is positive of Y. So this force is positive is P multiplied by area. This pressure force is negative is P plus dp multiplied by area. We have a wall shear stress acting on this side. Let's say the wall shear stress is tau wall. This wall is acting over this area, over the entire surface. So we have wall shear will act in opposite direction. It is basically given by perimeter of this one, that is pi d multiplied by this line, that is called as weighted area is equals to the m dot value, but v minus v is zero, so right hand side is zero multiplied by area which is given as pi by 4 into d square minus tau wall multiplied by pi multiplied by d multiplied by dx equal to 0. In this case your pi will be cancelled, one of the d will cancel. So we have minus dp and this 4 will multiply on this side and this become positive. 4 times tau w, d will come in denominator and this dx will adjust here. So we can write this term as minus dp by dx equals to 4 times tau wall and d we can write as 2 times of r. So finally we get minus dp by dx equals to 2 times of tau wall divided by r and in general this equation is written as 2 times of tau where the tau is the shear stress at any radius r. Now here you can conclude from dp by dx and tau wall is that the tau wall is remain constant at any length from the inlet to outlet that is, is independent of x value that is what this value says because tau wall is constant so dp by dx is also constant. So in the case of fully developed flow the pressure gradient dp by dx remains constant in a downstream that is along the direction of x because the pressure gradient is balance says the wall shear stress at any section so dp by dx is same as the tau wall divided by r so that is why the dp by dx is always constant so dp by dx hereafter always remains constant. So tau at any radius r is given by tau equal to r into minus dp by dx. dp by dx is constant it means that tau is proportional to r and negatives are indicate that the shear stress will act opposite to the direction of flow. So if I show this distribution, so my shear stress at the center will be 0 and the shear stress will increase linearly because the dp by dx is constant value. So this is how we can say the shear stress distribution. So at any radius r from the center we have shear stress equals to tau and this one is the shear stress at radius capital R that is tau wall. If I develop the lateral surface of the cylinder wall, it will be a flat plate having length equal to this length equal to dx and this width will be circumference that is 2 pi r and the wall is, is stationary. So this one is stationary wall. In between these two plate, so this one is a plate at center actually and this plate and the bottom plate is separated by distance equals to capital R that is the radius of the pipe and this fluid is filled the gap is filled with the fluid having viscosity equals to mu. Now this is the center plate, so you have to measure the radius r from center plate. Now recall the Newton's law of viscosity, Newton's law of viscosity is given as tau equal to mu into du by dy. But in this case, so the distance y was basically measured from the fixed plate. So this one is basically y value. So this one is y and this one is r value. From this one we can conclude that the radius r is equals to r plus y. The radius of the pipe will not change but the smaller will change. So if we take the derivative of this one, this will be equal to 0. This equals to dr plus dy. So we can conclude here that dy is always equals to minus of dr. So if we put this value here, we will get tau equal to minus of mu. 
into du by dr so this one is the equation for flat plate and this one is the equation you can use for circular pipe for newton's law of viscosity so let's say this is equation number one and this one is equation number two left hand side of both equation is tau so we can equate them so if we equate them we will get r by 2 minus dp by dx equal to minus mu into du by dx so this minus and this minus is cancel and we can solve for du by dr so we get du by dr equals to 1 by twice mu into dp by dx into r so if we integrate this we will get velocity at any radius r is 1 by 2 mu and this one is r square by 2 is 1 by 4 mu this one is dp by dx and this will be integral will be r square plus some constant of integration equal to c now to find out this constant of integration if we come to this point where r value will be equal to capital r at wall small r equal to capital r that is in this figure if we say this value is capital r in that case the velocity at the wall will be equal to 0 so u equal to 0 the value of c is equals to u is 0 so you will get this value will go to that side is 1 by 4 mu and dp by dx will be on that side but this whole term will be negative term and instead of r you have to put r square so in this equation of u that is equation number 3 we have to put this value back so we will get u is equals to 1 by 4 mu and this value is minus 1 by 4 mu into dp by dx into capital r square so from these two terms we can take 1 by 4 mu common dp by dx common so we can write this term as u equals to 1 by 4 mu if i take out minus dpx common then i have to write down first is capital r square and then this is minus of r square so this equation is the velocity at any radius r this equation clearly indicates that u is proportional to minus of r square that is a parabola so distribution in the case of laminar flow through a pipe is a parabolic distribution and is parabola is leftward that is if we try to show the distribution here the distribution will be leftward parabola so we have a velocity go so at any radius r your shear stress is tau and the corresponding value of velocity equals to u from this it is clear that the velocity at center is max so since the velocity at center is max you have to put r is equal to 0 so we have u max equals to 1 by 4 mu into dp by dx into capital r square now next job is to consider this pipe here so we will consider one elemental ring at radius equal to r thickness equal to dr and at this ring we have the radius equal to r and the velocity equals to u so elemental discharge is given by 2 pi r multiplied by dr into d and from this if we integrate this we can find out total discharge this total discharge passing through the circular section if we equate this equation with the average distribution that is the distribution is like this so in this case this distribution is called as average distribution that is the velocity is constant over the entire section is u bar so in that case the area will be equals to pi r square and the dish velocity is u bar so you have to integrate this equation so this equation is to be integrated from 0 to capital r solve this integral and we'll equate it so in this one 2 pi r dr will be the first term 2 pi r and dr i am writing here and this term is nothing but your u term that is 1 by 4 mu minus d by dx into r square here 2 pi 1 by 4 mu is constant term and even dp by dx is also constant term so one r is left here and one is r square here so in, inside this one we have capital r square multiplied by small r and this r and this r will become r cube into dr so this term is again constant and the integral of r square into small r so r square is a constant term integral of small r with respect to dr is r square by 2 upper limit is r so this is r square by 2 minus integral of r cube is r to the power 4 by 4 so we have capital r to the power 4 so this solution is r to the power 4 by 4 so that becomes pi this 2 and this 4 will become 8 mu minus dp by dx into r to the power 4 or we can equate this value equal to pi r square so this one is same as q and this equals to pi r square into u bar so we get u bar equals to here pi will be cancelled r square one of the r square is cancelled is 1 by 8 mu into minus dp by dx and this will be r square so we can we will write here this equation that is u bar equals so here the first equation is the velocity at any radius r that is a at this distribution is known to us this one is a maximum velocity you can obtain by putting r equal to 0 in this equation and if you take a ratio of u max by u average your every all term will get cancelled except 8 and 4 so we have a fixed value of u max divided by u average equals to 2 so you can remember this equation only the first equation in this equation put r equal to 0 if you put r equal to 0 you will get u max 
and once you know the value of u max you divide that value by 2 because of u average you will get this equation so as far as this discussion is considered you only remember the one equation only that is this equation one more time i will give the hint put r equal to 0 in the above equation then you will get the value of u max in this equation and we know that u max and u average relation so u average is equal to u max divided by 2 so you will get your regular equation this is section 1 and let's say this is section 2 in that case our dx will represent length l and now we can very well apply the Bernoulli equation between point 1 and 2 so energy at point 1 is p1 by rho g plus v1 square by 2g plus z1 and energy at section 2 is p2 by rho g plus v2 square by 2g plus z2 here the direction of flow is from section 1 to section 2 it means that e1 is greater than e2 when we are saying e1 is greater than e2 it means that there are some losses and the losses are always positive and the losses are purely due to friction the friction taking place between the layers of this fluid so we have e1 equal to e2 suppose i substitute for e1 equal to e2 like this so my e1 is same as v2 z1 is same as z2 so only term left here on this side is 1 by rho g minus of p2 by rho g is equals to hf now recall this dp by dx so whenever we write dp by dx dp by dx dp stands for the final minus initial value p2 minus p1 divided by line dx and this equation i get p1 minus p2 and rho g is common i have multiplied on the right hand side is rho g into hf so my dp is basically p2 minus p1 so i can write my dp is equal to p2 minus p1 so this term is minus dp is equal to rho into g into hf so therefore minus dp by dx i can write as rho into g into hf and dx is same as l so i will replace this by l and we already proved rho g hf by l equal to minus dp by dx so let's shift this term on this side it will be 8 mu u bar divided by r square and minus dp by dx will write as rho into g into hf by l so i can solve for hf hf equals to 8 mu u bar l by rho g r square at this instant i will replace r by d by 2 so we will get d by 2 whole square so this 2 and this square will become 4 and we got a famous equation hf equal to 32 mu u bar l divided by rho g d square equation for head loss is flv square v square is same as u average square upon twice gd and if you want to solve for the f term so in that case your g will cancel one of the d will cancel l will cancel and you then solve for f so this 2 will go to this side is 64 multiplied by mu into u bar and this d in the denominator and we left with here one term equal to rho your one of the u bar is also cancelled so this term will be equals to u bar one term of u bar is also cancelled now this term we can rearrange as f equals to 64 divided by rho v d by mu and rho v d by mu is nothing but Reynolds number so in case of laminar flow friction factor is always given by 64 by re 